in progress. Going back to the system that they announced three days ago, uh, three weeks ago, it's called Lisa 5A1. It's a very interesting system. They actually found three planets. The innermost one is huge. It's Jupiter-like. But then we have two rocky planets. So we have this planet that they announced habitable, that's um, the innermost planet that's about five Earth's masses. And then we have one that's out here that's about eight Earth's masses, so much bigger. And coming back to the question of the gentleman here, it is very, very tr easy to make a mistake. Because what they were saying is that this planet, the sea, the innermost one, is habitable. And it turns out, through our research, and we haven't published it yet, but we are sending this in next week, actually, on Monday, this one is too hot. So even if Walmart apparently thought it was a good idea to go there, this one is going to be above the boiling point of water. So if I were you and you wanted to go on a trip, I'd really not go to this one. I'd go to the one that's further out there. And so we're coming back to the system of the Goldilocks zone. What I show you here is um, that's the height in the atmosphere, so from 0 to 60 kilometers. And this is temperatures in degrees Celsius. <coughs> um, I apologize that it is Celsius and not Fahrenheit. But basically you see that on this planet that's too close in, or that they said that's the future Earth. And I think I remember that um, in one of the daily shows, I think they were saying you can keep driving your SUVs because we have a new planet that you can go to. <laughs> Don't keep driving the SUVs because that planet kind of sucks if you get there. It's worse than ours. You don't want to do that. But the outermost one might be. But here you have like about 370 Celsius that's above the boiling point of water. Don't go there. Don't get your chips to go there. Um, so if you have the other planet, well, now I come to another tricky point. The planet is very close to a star, right? If a planet is very close to a star, what happens is the same thing that happened to our moon. We only see the same face the whole time. We never see it, we never see it rotate. The thing that faces us, always the same size. And that's what happens to a planet if it's that close to a star. So the funny thing is now you can actually <coughs> have a look what that does to the atmosphere of the planet. A, we've taken into account that it's bigger, so it actually can retain the atmosphere. It doesn't boil off that easily, as uh, the gentleman mentioned. But the other thing that also happens is that you have two sites to consider. You have to consider the site that's always getting sunlight, and you have to consider the site that never gets sunlight, like on our moon. And if it has an Earth-like atmosphere, that's actually a fun game to play. Because you see, on the day side, you actually get about uh, freezing temperature, about room temperature, actually. So on the day side, it's nice and warm and palmy, while on the night side, it's really, really cold. So what we found is that if the planet was not tightly locked, so if it would be nicely <coughs> rotating, the whole planet would be too cold for life. It would be about minus 25C, minus 40C. But because it's tightly locked, because it's so close to a star, that actually gets it out of this problem. And on the sunny side, it could actually be a nice vacation spot. I'm not promising anything because we haven't gotten any photos from the planet yet, but it looks very, very promising. And then the other part I wanted to mention, what about how does our Earth actually, how did it look like over its evolution? And here I got an artist's impression because we had a press conference on this last, week, last year. And the funny thing is, it seemed to be that if you get something from the American University, it's always America. Like, if you look back in time, it's always going to be America. And honestly, I think last time I was there, uh, there weren't so many peaks in Money Monk Valley, but that could have been my misinterpretation. But basically, the question was, what time is it there? If we find a planet, can we say anything about whether it's as evolved as we are, whether it's bacteria there? And in our planet, we, we kind of know what the evolution was. In the beginning, there was a lot of carbon dioxide. 
Then there was bacteria that produced methane, so we had another greenhouse gas. Then there was bacteria who actually produced oxygen, killed off the methane bacteria, so methane went down in concentration in our atmosphere. And so oxygen started to rise and carbon dioxide came down. And here this is where we are now, so if we keep driving the SUVs, we're probably doing this. <laughs> if we stop keep driving the SUVs, we're probably nice in the palmy environment. Lisa? Yes. When you asked earlier, can we tell the difference between a planet with bacteria and one with dinosaurs? If you have higher life forms, more abundant life forms, do you see a measurable difference in methane? Um, do you say higher life forms like us or bacteria? Dinosaurs compared to bacteria, because there's going to be bacteria on the same planet that dinosaurs right. are on. But the presence of dinosaurs or cows or whatever, <laughs> will you see more methane, a measurable amount more methane? Well, actually what we found is that if you only have bacteria, you find more methane because it's before the oxygen bacteria kicked in and they killed off most of the methanogens. The methanogens. So they killed off most of the bacteria that actually produced methane. So if we have a high methane, what we think we look at is a slush ball. Basically an earth that only is covered with bacteria that has not had bacteria that produce oxygen yet. So there's a lot of methane bacteria. I'll show you this in a second how it looks like. Actually, uh, Earth has a lot more methane locked up. I agree. A lot of it's in the ocean. Yeah. It's very so dangerous. Yeah. One of the other problems you have, I said that methane is a very nice indication for bacteria, but methane is not what we call a biomarker because methane can easily be produced by abiotic processes. It's locked up in the Earth's mantle. So it can be just released from a plant. Methane itself is not an indicator that there's biological life. But if you have methane with oxygen, these two gases react with each other very, very fast. That tells you that you have something that produces oxygen in huge amount. And if that's happening, that's what we think life has to be. We don't know of an abiotical, non-biological system that actually does that. But so translating this change in our atmosphere into a spectrum, what we, what we had a look at is like, can you tell the difference? And it turns out you actually can. In our Earth's atmosphere, you have about six different epochs that you can distinguish if you just have the light of this planet. So this is when Earth was really old. You had a lot of CO2. You have some, some water but no oxygen, and you don't see any methane yet. Here again, you see that there's now starting to be a feature. There's something missing that indicates CH4. Here, that's about two billion years ago. You see a lot of things missing that indicate that there's CH4 methane in the atmosphere. And then about two billion years ago, half of Earth's lifetime, you see something is missing in the spectrum that indicates oxygen and ozone. And then the oxygen bacteria basically <coughs> won out. The oxygen feature becomes much stronger. The CH4 feature goes away. And this is now our day. This is our spectral fingerprint if anybody looks at us. And this is our spectral fingerprints when we were really, really young, when Earth just formed. You can do the same in the heat and the emitted light. And again, you see in the beginning, when Earth was really old, just formed, a uh, really young, sorry, just formed, you see only CO2 and not much more features. About two billion years ago, you see that ozone shows up and you also see methane showing up. And then, current day atmosphere, you see ozone, CO2, and water. So in these stages where you see methane but no oxygen, we would say that this is now a methane bacteria world where no oxygen bacteria has won out yet. This is where oxygen starts to win out we still have a lot of methane bacteria, and then the oxygen starts to kill off the methane sign. And nowadays, we have a small little feature here, but it's going to be very difficult to detect. So by having a look at the spectral fingerprint, we should be able to say whether or not there's a slush ball and there's like bacteria producing methane, or whether or not it's the dinosaurs or us. Because between us,